Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 28th of February 2021 and an actually interesting bag of updates this week because there's a lot of retirements. I was going to try and create a funny picture where I age myself, um, but it actually added hair to me when I tried it. So really that just annoyed me, so I gave up on that. Uh, as always, if this is useful, a like, subscribe, comment and share is appreciated. Uh, new videos this week. So I created a fairly deep dive about the difference between using Microsoft peering and private peering with private endpoints to access um, PaaS services in Azure from on-premises via ExpressRoute. And I should go into detail about all the DNS configuration and implications of private peering with private endpoints. So if you're interested in that stuff, uh, maybe worth a look. And then I kind of just did a fairly quick overview of the different technologies I can use with Azure Storage and Arm in general around locking and recovery. Um, if I have one of those uh-oh moments and uh, delete saying I probably shouldn't have in Azure Storage. Um, I wanted to touch on something super, super quick. Um, there's been a lot of very kind people who have commented um, about well, how can we contribute to the channel. Um, it's super kind, uh, but completely not necessary. Um, I don't have advertising on my channel. I don't have Patreon or any of those things. Um, this channel is a big part of me trying to give back to the community. Uh, for those that know me, I kind of follow five key rules and I have them above the screen. Uh, I have the copy of my pool room as well. And I think giving something back is really important. Um, and this is the, one of the ways I can give back to help other people, maybe improve their knowledge, maybe help them get a, a different job or something like that. So very kind, um, but completely not necessary. If you, if you feel compelled, go and help someone in some way and, and kind of just pass it on. Uh, on a similar thread though, more and more people are kind of pinging me directly, maybe tagging me in some social media or pinging me on LinkedIn. Unfortunately, obviously I, I have a day job, I have a family, um, I have my training and I have kind of spending a lot of time creating content, I, I really can't provide kind of one-to-one -one, um, support. So unfortunately, I, I have to kind of just not respond to those things. On to the content. So again, a huge amount of retirement or change notifications this week. So the first is for kind of the E64 V3s and the G5, these will no longer be hardware isolated from the 28th of February, 2022. So remember, what does that mean? So if we think about a regular box in Azure, there is a physical host that runs the virtual machines and that has a certain amount of resource. So today, those kind of, those E-series, those G5s, that virtual machine essentially takes up all of the resources of that box. So you are essentially hardware isolated. There's no other VM from another tenant on that box with you. And what they're basically saying is, well look, hardware evolves, the physical boxes are getting bigger. So this box is now actually gonna become this big. So you won't be the only VM on it anymore. There'll be other VMs will be able to fit on that box. So if you wanna stay hardware isolated, either you have to kind of make the VM bigger or use Azure dedicated host. Remember with Azure dedicated host, you get a physical box of a certain type that supports a certain type of virtual machine, and then you fill it up with virtual machines of various sizes that you want. So it's really just a notification saying, hey look, for those virtual machines on that date, because the underlying hardware is getting bigger, they will not take up the whole box anymore. They will no longer be hardware isolated. So if you need that, make it bigger so it fills up the box again, or use Azure dedicated host. Or if you don't care about the hardware isolation, just carry on as you are. Um, also as part of that, the GS5 will no longer be SAP HANA certified from the 28th of February, 2022. Um, so really what they're saying is move to the E64 DSV4, which is now the SAP HANA certified SKU. So you can start moving to that now. They're just letting you know in advance, hey, what certified changes over time. So the Jenkins plugins are retiring. So if you think about Jenkins is that open source automation server, 
Uh, we might use it to build software, to run tests against software, to do that continuous integration, continuous deployment. Today, there's a whole set of plugins available for different Azure components. What they're basically saying is that they're being retired on that 29th of February, 2024. That date is gonna be recurring a lot in this presentation. The recommendation now is to use the AZ CLI instead. It's more robust, it's more featurist. That's where the investment is actually going. Uh, the AKS Legacy Azure AD integration is also retiring on the 29th of February, 2024. Switch to the modern. So there's a modern Azure AD authentication. It's better in that now the ARM provider automatically goes and creates the various application service principles in Azure AD to allow this. With the legacy, you had to manually go and create a bunch of stuff. Remember, what this does, it lets me use um, Azure AD-based role-based access control for roles on AKS. It uses OpenID Connect for the actual authentication, but now I can use my Azure AD users and groups and grant them roles against my AKS. So it's basically saying, look, stop using the legacy, switch to that new modern managed Azure AD integration. Uh, Classic App Insights is going to be retiring on, you guessed it, 29th of February uh, 2024. This was the one, the Classic had its own type of back-end storage for all of the data. Um, the modern just uses a regular log analytics workspace. So again, move to that modern, common log analytics workspace for your App Insights. On the networking side, um, so the web application firewall has actually have an updated rule set for Azure front door. So there's now this new default rule set 1.1, uh, incremented from 1.0. So this has a broader set of coverage and there's some modifications reducing some false positives. So this is really just letting you know, hey, you've built on that threat um, intelligence. There's now that updated rule set available. So network performance monitor network watcher connection monitor classic and azure app gateway analytics are all retiring on the 29th of february now the first two network performance monitor and network watcher connection monitor classic they have been replaced by the new connection monitor that's in azure network watcher and um, really that takes the best of network performance monitor and the old classic and brings it together into this new tool set for that end-to-end -end complete kind of hybrid monitoring um, from workloads on premises to things in virtual networks to other clouds uh, over express routes showing me latencies showing me all the connectivity performing various types of tests all of that is now in the new connection monitor in azure network watcher so switch to that and that's going away for the azure app gateway analytics you can now actually use a um, an azure monitor network insights workbook that gives me kind of that same level of insight. So again, plenty of time, but start thinking about moving if you're using those kind of classic, those older solutions. On the storage side, so Postgres SQL support for 9.6 ends, 11.11.2021. Um, 11, 20, so a different date, take note of that. So make sure you go and get to a newer version. Remember with the managed database offerings, and they take care of like the OS patching, but to go to a new kind of major version, you're gonna stand up a new instance of Postgres and then migrate your data. So I can do this offline, I can do kind of a, a dump and then import that into a dump and restore of the data, so that's an offline move, or I can use a data migration service for an online move to that new instance of Postgres running a newer engine. ADLS Gen 1 is retiring on 29th of February 2024. I mean, basically get to ADLS Gen 2. ADLS Gen 2 sits on top of Blob, remember? So we get all of the feet, not all, <laughs> a lot of the features of Blob and that's constantly improving. We're getting more things like tiering, better high availability, better disaster recovery. We can use the ADLS APIs and the Blob APIs and the pricing is better. So basically just, if you're on Gen 1, think about moving to Gen 2. The classic Azure Migrate, not the classy, the classic <laughs> Azure Migrate retires on the 1st of March, 2024. I'm kidding. Um, it's also the 29th of February, 2024. 
Um, basically, you want to be moving to the new Azure Migrate. Remember, the new Azure Migrate helps me do that discovery, assessment, and migration. There's that entire tool set around it. You're probably going to have moved to it anyway, like most of these things, but just bear in mind, hey, um, I need to be off of that old one in three years' time. And then there's a bunch of miscellaneous things. Um, so Datadog is now available through the Azure Marketplace. So if we just jump over and look, if we go to the Marketplace, we can see, hey, look, I'm going to go ahead and create a resource. I can just search for Datadog. And kind of there it is. So remember, Datadog provides those kind of monitoring, those security solutions for hybrid, for multi-cloud environments. And it's really going to make it a lot easier to deploy. Um, I'm not having to worry now about sending stuff to Event Hub and using functions to get it into Datadog. It's got a very simple VM agent deployment. So it's really bringing all of those things together to make it easier to use uh, Datadog. So that is there for you. The Azure AT one-time passcode feature will be on by default in October 2021. And that old style of the unmanaged Azure AD accounts will disappear. So remember, the one-time passcode is for those guest accounts. When I'm not using an Azure AD or Microsoft account or a Gmail or a direct federation, well, it will email them a code when they try and authenticate to their email address, which proves they still have access to that mailbox, and they type in that code to authenticate. So now that will become the default if none of the other B2B things um, actually apply. The Azure RM module is retiring on the 29th of February, uh, 2024. That was replaced by the AZ module. All of the new functionality goes into the AZ module. So really, you should already be moving off of Azure RM. If you still have Azure RM scripts, remember, there is the um, AZ upgrade module plan commandlets that will take an existing Azure RM script and convert it to an AZ script. That's part of the AZ Tools migration module. Uh, there's also a, a, a module, a command, that will create aliases to the Azure RM commandlets from the AZ. But really, you'd be better off just migrating to use the AZ module. So use those tools, that AZ Tools migration module. Run the plan, run the conversion, and move your scripts off of Azure RM to AZ. Um, Azure AD Connect Sync versions prior to the 5th of May 2018 um, will be retired in three years' time. So if you were still running something six, seven years old, um, it won't work anymore. They're retiring it. Hopefully you're not anyway. You want to be using the newer versions of Azure AD Connect. Um, but definitely realize, hey, if in three years' time I'm running something from 2018, it's going to stop working. A uh, new data center in Indonesia uh, was announced. So actually, I don't think it's actually showing on the map yet. So if we actually look, and my geography is terrible, but if we go uh, and look, oh, OK, it's just added it. So we can see over there, so there's the new proposed uh, region that will be added. And it's going to have availability zones. We can see by the icon, it's actually going to have availability zones as well. Um, Azure Stack Edge Pro FPGA is retiring on 29th of February 2024. Go and use the GPU ones instead. And move to the new alerts if you're using Garb or China Cloud because the classics will retire on 29th of February 2024. Azure AD Temporary Access Pass is in preview. So this is actually a pretty cool thing. If we think about, if I want to go passwordless, I want to use Hello for Business or Fido2 or, or the or kind of authenticate the app, authenticator app. Um, I have to bootstrap initially that passwordless environment with kind of a password and MFA. So I have to have that password. So what temporary access pass does is the admin can generate, if I want, a one-time code that lasts for an hour. I can then give that to the user they use that to authenticate, and that counts as a strong authentication. And then I can directly go and set up passwordless, be it FIDO2, Hello for Business. So this is in preview, and the way this actually looks, if 
I can actually get back over here, is under my Azure AD, I'll jump back over, and under my security, I can go to my authentication methods, as kind of always, and we'll see this new under policies, temporary access pass. Now I've turned it on, so you can see I've got this set to enabled, and I've actually got it set for all users. And notice here I've got some settings I can edit around sort of minimum lifetime, maximum lifetime, default lifetime, is it one time? One time means, as the name suggests, if I type in that code, I can't use it again. If I turn that off, then I could use that code a couple of times for whatever its lifetime is. So you go and enable this, and then what you can do is for the user, I can say, okay, so Bruce Wayne actually wants to go and set up um, password list, hello for business, for example, or something on it, or FIDO2 on his machine. So I would go in, but he doesn't have a password, but he needs to bootstrap that password list environment. So I can go to authentication methods for the user, then I'm going to go to the new experience. And from here, you can see I've got an add authentication method. And I'm going to select that temporary access pass. I can set that duration based on what my policy was. I can say, is it a one-time use or not? And click add. At this point, it will show me a password. I have to copy that down and give it to the user directly. And then they will use that via this special URL. So the whole point of this is it's time boxed and it's still considered strong because I'm generating that. I'm gonna make sure I give it to that user and only that user someone, so someone can't kind of intercept that. If they use that to actually authenticate, it counts as a strong authentication. So then they can go and set up password lists. I have to have bootstrapped with a strong auth before I can set up password lists. So this will count as that. So it removes the need to have to actually have a password to set up password lists. So a pretty nice feature um, in preview. And then uh, ASR Rollup 54 uh, is now GA, so that's released. I'll have the link below. There's a few new things around kind of the new agent and some improvements around disk size and, and a few other things. So that was it. Um, I hope that was useful. Again, lots of kind of notifications about retirements, but a few kind of cool, nice things. I'm, I'm really excited about that Azure AD temporary access pass. Um, but as always, until next week, take care.